Hello, I pray that you are well today. We look at Proverbs chapter 5, 6, and 7. And the topic is adultery. It's the question of specifically being unfaithful. It opens this way. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and their speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. You could say the issue of the adulteress or the adulterer for that matter. And what is he doing? He's warning. Much of the book of Proverbs is warning. If you don't listen, there will be consequences. Listen. He says, now listen, my sons. Listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep, a, keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house lest you, lose, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you'll groan when your flesh and body are spent and you'll say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. So in other words, there's a consequence. There are consequences to poor choices. Here, you lose your honor, you lose your dignity. Other people feast on your wealth and you enrich the house of others. At the end of your life, you'll groan and say, when my flesh and body are spent, how, how I hated discipline. Instead, he says, we ought focus on those of us that are married, our own spouses. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May you be intoxicated with her love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord. He examines all your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them, and the cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline, they will die, led astray by their great folly. This is a warning. Chapter 5 of the book of Proverbs is all about a warning, a warning of being faithful and not being unfaithful. But consider... He goes on in chapter 6, at the very end, verses 20 and following. My son, keep your father's command. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your neck. Fasten them around your heart. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this a command is a lamp, a teaching is a light, and a correction and instruction, they are the way of life, to keep you from your neighbor's wife from the smooth talk of a wayward woman. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty, nor let her captivate you with her eyes. For a prostitute can be had for the loaf of bread, but another man's wife preys on your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Take note, the image is, don't be surprised. You can't scoop fire. You can't hold on to fire without it burning you, without a consequence. You can't walk on hot coals without your feet being scorched. He goes on to say, people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he's starving. Yes, if he's caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does not, who does so, destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot. His shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He'll refuse a bribe, however great it is. That's chapter 6. Chapter 7, he doesn't stop. My son, keep my words and stir up commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the table of your heart. Say to wisdom, you're my sister. To insight, you're my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. At the window of my house, I looked down at the lattice. I saw the simple. I noticed the young man, youth who had no sense. He was going down to the street near her corner, walking in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day was fading at the dark and the night set in, then came out a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute with crafty intent. She's unruling and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. 
Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him. With a brazen face, she said, Today I fulfill my vows. I have food for my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you, and I looked for you, and I found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us drink deeply of love till morning. Let us enjoy ourselves with love. My husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money. He will not be home till full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once he followed her, like an ox going to slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose, till an arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. What does he say? He's warning. There are consequences. It's like holding fire. It's like falling into a trap, a snare. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her past. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. These are strong words. Make note, it's not just oh, an adulteress. It also can be an adulterer. There are consequences to not fulfilling your vows to your husband or to your wife. There are consequences of trying to hold fire in your own hands as if you're not going to get burned or to be caught in a snare. This is a warning. God says in his word, you shall not commit adultery. What is he trying to do? He is trying to protect us from that which harms, from that which hurts. You and I all know people who have not heeded these circumstances, and they have fallen into a trap. They have tried to hold fire, and it has damaged them and other people in their life. It's a warning. Wisdom is often a warning, a warning of adultery, adultery that is a fire, adultery that is a snare. Instead, we ought to live a chaste and decent life. We ought be, as the scripture says, to focus on our spouse, even as the language uses to be intoxicated by them. That is, we are infatuated with them. We are focused on them. We are building them up. We are spending our time loving them. This is the nature of life. This is a, a serious matter because he speaks three different chapters about it. Take note. If you look at King Solomon's life himself, right? The wisest man that ever lived. But if you look in toward the end of his life, here's the phrase that's used. And his heart was turned away from God. His heart was turned by his relationships. His heart was turned. And so therefore, that's why this matters. That, that we honor the relationships we're in. We acknowledge the relationships we're in and we, we honor them with everything we have because we honor God. Please pray with me. Lord God, in this day, allow us to be hear the warning that you say in your word, but let us honor the relationships we're in. Our husbands and our wives, our families, and those that are so impacted by our faithfulness one to another. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, adultery, it's a fire and it's a snare. God bless you.